Thank you, Pastor Lloyd. I just want to first add a comment or two about what Pastor Lloyd commented on. He said <clears throat> maybe it's Father's Day or, <clears throat> or something to do with it, but the four sisters who sang up here looked especially nice. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is add my well wishes with everyone for every father here. But the second thing I want to say, and I want to add to it, that for each and every father sitting here today and attending today, you know, we would be only half in effect without the mothers of our children standing by their side also. So even though it's Happy Father's Day, it should also be Happy Mother's Day. And perhaps that, that added to the nice lookingness of the four sisters who sang up here today. <laughs> like Pastor Lloyd said, um, <clears throat> he called me up here to introduce my good friend Stan Morikawa. I don't know how long I've known him, 25, 30 years, something like that. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen him for a while because all of you know where I've just come from. But the friendships never die. And then, you know, Stan, of course, has opened his heart to the Lord. And I know some of the things that he wrote in the book, but I didn't know more, a lot of it. Now, like Pastor Lloyd, when I first picked it up to read it, I really didn't think it was going to be anything that special until, until I started reading it. <laughs> and this isn't a sales pitch, believe me. I, I read it in one sitting, and I couldn't put it down either. And I, I suppose that's what led to having Stan here today. Um, all I'm going to say is this. One of my most powerful uh, faith um, heroes is always Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. Some of you may be familiar with his name. And he said one time something I like to say because I've experienced it myself. And he said one time that a person is in an awesome and wonderful place when he or she has nowhere else to turn to except Jesus. Amen. And when you read, if you read Stan's book and you listen to him today, you will find that he reached that point in his life and he made the wisest decision that he, he could ever make in his life and that is turn to Jesus. Let me just call Stan up here. to listen to somebody you never heard of. <coughs> um, it, you know, it always makes me nervous to see a full house. Yesterday I spoke at a men's conference and the room was just packed out, standing room only. And I was really planning to get down on the men <coughs> and I was saying a little prayer and then I looked up and I saw all these women were <laughs> all lined up against the wall. So I had to tweak it back. I guess the Lord wanted me to practice for today. So. <laughs> but... <coughs> It's so, it's so great to be able to go around and uh, share a testimony that I never thought I'd be writing a book because people have been asking me for a couple of decades to write it and I said, no way, I'm not going to write that story about my life. And then <clears throat> at the end of last year, I just felt the Lord uh, <clears throat> mandating me to write the book and write it quick, so I did. Uh, it's kind of a miraculous thing that happened. But anyway, I'm, I'm just glad to be here and I, I thank you for allowing me. I'd like to say a little prayer before we get started. Well, Lord, I just thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here today to share, and I just feel such a sweet spirit in here, Lord, and I, I love it, and I just ask that you be good to them and just give them things that they need to hear today, Lord. Don't even wait for me. Let the Holy Spirit, Spirit just move on, Lord, and uh, I just uh, count on you. I can't do anything without you, and I'm trusting you today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we we, uh, <clears throat> we live in a really crazy world. I'm sure you've heard about all these tragedies that are going on. Uh, our whole lives, we're, we're living in, in sinking sand. Um, the world is all in quicksand. The United States is sitting in real soft quicksand. We're sinking fast. Uh, quicksand is up to our ears. We, we can't even breathe already. And that's where our lives are. There's a lot of things happening out there that uh, God's been giving us a message that uh, 
he's going to be doing something. We better be prepared. I'm not here to glorify my past in any way. Uh, but what I'm here to do is illuminate what God is showing us as far as what he can do for us beyond what we can imagine. The Bible says that he, we, he will do, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can think, we can even think or imagine. And so we're all going to have to start learning new things to, to know what he, he can do beyond what we used to believe him for. And the things that are coming down is, is very uh, evident because God has been giving us messages lately. He's been, uh, you know, he, in Amos 3, 6, he said, if there's a calamity in a city, is it not I who've done it? And he's in verse 7, he says, but surely I, I will do nothing until I've revealed it to my servants. And he's, he's been revealing this message to his servants. Like in Thailand, uh, when they had the big tidal wave, God removed, the, the Christians were really getting persecuted on the coastline. And he, all the Christians moved up country before the tidal wave, and he came in and wiped out the place. So there's been a lot of disasters, tidal waves, earthquakes, um, volcano, uh, the, the oil, oil slick right now, you know, things that uh, only God can, can fix. But God is also showing that he can cripple, paralyze any country, no matter what their military might is. And if people start going against his people, that country had better start watching out, and that includes the United States. So we all got to be prepared for whatever might be coming down. Uh, <clears throat> like I say, our lives have always been on quicksand, and every, every step we take, we're actually getting deeper. My, my quicksand life started way back in junior high school, when uh, I already was addicted to gambling, and I started gambling right on campus, and I got caught shooting crap uh, right on campus at Hilo Intermediate School. The only problem was that uh, I was the student body treasurer. <laughs> so we all got hauled in, and the principal goes down the line, yes, everybody, how long have you been gambling, and who did you learn from? So everybody's going, oh, you know, um, I learned from my uncle, and I watched my father, and my friends told me, and I, he came to me last, and he said, well, Stan, how long have you been gambling, and who did you learn from? I said, oh, I just learned today from these guys. <laughs> So then, and he turns around and says, you see what you've done to this outstanding student here? <laughs> so if they could, if looks could kill it, kill me, it might be dead already. <laughs> but I, I avoided being the uh, first and only uh, student government impeachment in the state of Hawaii. <laughs> but I continued to gamble all through high school. Um, in the, I joined the army right out of high school, and I was just like a gambling icon in the service. I, I just gambled from the boat all the way over to my permanent station in Germany. The games never started till I got there. And